So what's up everybody? It's me, it's me, True Star Screamer. And we're here with not yet another, no, uh, this is just gonna be something a little different. Um, do not worry, I am not turning into a Gunpla channel, but I do want to talk a little bit about some Gunpla, or Gundam plastic models, you know. You see them at Hobby Lobby, don't buy there. You see them at the Hobby Shop, you see them at Target now, and you see them at GameStop occasionally. Uh, did I mention don't buy them at Hobby Lobby? That's a, just, just trust me. Uh, these guys though... I used to be, I call this like a little more of a retrospective here. This is um, the Goof Custom from uh, the MS-08 team series, but this is a, this design, the Goof, was in the original Gundam series. Uh, it is not a Zaku. If you've ever watched the original Gundam movies, you'll know exactly where that line is from, Mr. Rumble, Rambo Rao. And no, I'm not going to do a whole video of me snipping the pieces, cleaning it up. I'm not that guy. I am going to talk a little bit, though, about the finished design of it, some things I like about it, and also uh, we're going to talk about some custom customizing on this. So this is a high grade. They've got all different scales. This is probably your most accessible. If you ever wanted to get into Gunpla, if you want to be casual about it, the 1140 four scale, the high grades are easily the best way of doing it. They're relatively inexpensive. They go anywhere from, honestly, I've seen them anywhere from 12, depending on the store, 12 to $25. And maybe 30 for um, a Sazabi, but that was a really big one. I'm still tempted to get that. I used to actually be very big into building these in my early 20s. Believe it or not, an ex-girlfriend took all of mine from me. <laughs> go figure. And I built all the Gundam wings and Avas and stuff. I like to do these because it gives me a little, I don't say sense of control, but it's just something to get away from the normal action figure buzz. You, you, you accomplish something. You start from the pieces and you get a finished kit. Uh, this, like I mentioned before, is one of my favorite designs. Um, the Zaku actually is probably my favorite. And we'll, spoiler, I built one. And what I like about these is if you've ever, this is a great way of actually learning a lot about the act, how action figures are made because you're building these. Um, these come on sprue kits, as you know, and you kind of get an idea of how the skeleton works, the joints work, the engineering to it all. In some ways, it really gives you an appreciation of when you get something from Hasbro or even Bandai of what goes into an action figure. Another thing about these is if you ever want to get into customization, kit bashing, things like that. This is a fantastic way of practicing all that because a model doesn't cost a lot of money. Yes, it takes time to build it. That's probably the biggest thing. And for me, it is a very wonderful zen-like moment. Actually, I built this guy on my last day off. I literally disconnected from the world and cranked up the music and just zen zened out with this. So. That's just, it, it, we're gonna get in the customizations in a second. But let's talk about this figure itself. Um, as I said, I bought this one at, uh, actually I think I bought this one at a GameStop for $15. And then I used my $5 coupon, so it was basically 10 bucks. And what you get for $10 with this finished product is better than what you get for $25, I think, from... So I bought this for about $15 at a GameStop, and what you get for $15, I feel is better than what you get for $25 from the conventional action figure. Articulation, some of the simple stuff here. Um, it is a double jointed, I mean a single jointed, a uh, double jointed knee that does that barely makes 90. Uh, you do get a little bit of an ankle rocker in there. You can kick up about yay high, kick back, but. And that's probably one of my more disappointing aspects of this model kit. Um, I thought this guy would have a little more articulation due to him being so physical. Uh, the, he's got these tubes on here, which actually really do restrict his waist. That's one thing I, I'm not a fan of with this kit. Uh, nice range of motion on the arms. You do have a butterfly joint in there. 
And again, when you build a kit, you get to see kind of what goes into a butterfly joint. Uh, it does have a single jointed elbow. And I love the shoulders are nice. As far as accessories go, we've got this awesome massive cannon arm here. This is removable, so it can have just a sword and, the sword and shield. Uh, the sword here, it's interesting. You actually have to split the hands open to put the hand, put the sword in, and then close up the hand. So I'm just going to pop the hand out here. Um, you can actually um, store the sword in the shield, which is pretty neat. And then here, this little spot here, you can actually pull this plug out and put a wired cable and have a grappling hook. I have that in storage right now. Um, I didn't do, t as of right now, I haven't done any major painting on this. The only thing is I did paint the eye as opposed to put the sticker on here. I did put the sticker here in the gun scope. Uh, gun itself, nice, heavy duty. But all this is just a very bare, you know, it's plastic. And in fact, this is where the fun part, I think, of Gunplug comes in. Because, well, I'm going to bring in this Zaku. This is the Shar of Enzabal version of it. So I love the red Zaku. And this guy was originally all flat plastic. And you can see here, I've taken paint to it. I've dry brushed it. I've weathered it. Uh, his axe here was originally a stick. Um, I painted a weathered blade on there. Uh, this was all single plastic, so I painted the cable on here. I uh, added some dry brushing to the knuckles to bring it out. And then just kind of, the idea was this one, I made it look like he was very battle-worn. So um, next part of this video, I'm actually going to be pausing this, and I'm going to spend some time see if I give this treatment to this figure here to see if I can kind of bring it out to make it look a little more alive. Again, this is just something a little different. Um, just to show, you know, there's just some more fun things you can do with collecting. And this is, if you ever again want to get into the customization of it all, the most best, one of the best ways of practicing techniques because you're not putting a lot of money into it. So let's take a quick break. We're going to do the magical world of editing. Uh, I'm going to uh, break this guy into the paint shop and just see some cool stuff. Now, take note, I did actually record the whole customizing process. It is over 12 minutes of footage, though, so it's not in this video. But if you do want to see it, leave me a comment down below, and I'll actually post another video about it. So here is the goof now that I'm all finished up customizing it. And yeah, you can still see I got residue on my hands, even though I've washed it like three times. I put this guy through the ringer. In fact, this guy went through it much worse than this guy did. Um, just because, again, I've, I've learned other techniques. I took a file and started literally filing the hit, hitting it off the edges here to start roughing up the edges on the knees to make it look like the thing was kneeling down and got etched up. Um, on the gun here, I took a skewer, set it on fire to kind of melt through and push through the plastic. Took a scalpel, started scraping it up. Same over here, took the scalpel to the shoulder pads. Um, then I did, made a composite solution of paints of uh, pewter, a little bit of white, and some metallic, and started dry brushing the whole thing over. And I was hitting that, I ran the sword through the sandpaper. Now, I did have a little bit of a casualty. I actually broke the hand at the thumb here, so this sword is never coming out of this hand because I, I had to super glue this together. Uh, but, I mean, I took sandpaper to the edge here, to the uh, pretty much all the area, every, every um, edge surface got, got sanded, basically. So that way it was able to pick it up when I dry brushed it. Plus, I hit panel lining solution and then a black wash over everything, as well as taking silver paint to the edges as well to really bring out. The... I just wanted this guy to, you know, to bring out these edges, to bring out the scrapes, to make it look like the paint was been completely torn off here. Uh, my goal was to make this goof look like it has been in the desert or in the mountains, wherever it's been. It has been neglected. Pretty much, they overhaul the engine the weapons and that's it cosmetics be damned because they got bigger things to worry about 
and I am very, very pleased with the results. I know you hear this thing scraping against the uh, wood here. I apologize. But this is, again, techniques like this, seeing how it works out, I then will transfer to other things, whether I be um, doing a diorama or customizing some, you know, doing some paints on other action figures like Marvel Legends, G.I. Joe weapons and such. Even I've done it to Transformers, believe it or not, even though I don't collect them as much. I used to panel line the hell out of Hasbro figures and it made such a difference. So I want to bring the Zaku up here again. This is a guy who I pretty much, again, I was just dry brushing the edges with it. Um, combination of silver and blacks just to kind of, and then a wash on him just to kind of bring out his edges. Um, I mean, this, the blade here looks absolutely horrendous. I know I can paint that better, but I like to have these here just to see how the techniques evolved and they still don't look bad together. You know, these guys look like they've been, it's a ragtag crew out there just trying to figure it all out. So, um, but yeah, this is just something a little different, some different content. Like I said, this is not going to be um, a semi-regular thing, but to be blunt, stuff is not coming down the pipeline like I'd like it to. BBTS hasn't gotten any shipments in ages. Uh, Amazon hasn't gotten their shipments, so what can you do? Either A, I need to start finding new figures to collect, or B, I just gotta find new places to buy them from. I mean, come on, even 5K Toys is running a little slow. But um, let me know your, th your thoughts down in the comments if you like stuff like this. I may be doing a tour collection, a uh, collection tour, you know, as uh, another so possible side video. These are things that you like, you know. Let me know what kind of filler content catches your eye. Um, again, I am really happy with how this turned out. You know, again, I painted the web, the barrels silver, and then hit the black wash. Same with the bullets. Just really trying to make this not look like flat plastic. Now, I know I am nowhere near the best gunplug guy out there. There are some channels out there that make my jaw drop, but A, I don't have the skill. B, I don't have the patience to get that skill. These guys, gunpla is life. But, this is definitely, uh, this figure is mine now. This figure is mine, and there will be no other figures like them, because I made them this way. And if you like this, give this a like. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. If you're a regular here and you haven't hit that subscribe button, hit that subscribe button. I want to hit the 500 by 2025, people guys and only you can help me out and then you know maybe I'll do some kind of giveaway or something that's right I'll bribe you but um, as always though until next time please take care peace